Shalom Israel, Shabbat Shalom. This is Judah for Life coming to you live again. As always, we give praise our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and everything He has done for us up until this time and era. In today's lesson, to video, we're going to be talking about these Freemasonic sun worshiping idiots. Right? Now, I'm going to show you where. Who came up with the Big Bang Theory? And also we're going to talk about, go, we're, going to, we're going to delve further into them not ever landing on the moon. They're lying to you. So like here, you have all these Freemasonic um, occult symbols. Okay? Like here, you have this Masonic, you have this Muslim hat, this fans hat. Look at this hat right here. And this is the same hat that you see on. This is the same hat that you see on lovestriners.org with the hospital for kids. Look at that. Who do y'all think he's fooling, man? Who do you think he's fooling? These people are Masons. The Masons. Now, let's get into the information. Okay? And for those who want to know what this book is entitled, this book is entitled The Flat Earth Conspiracy. And then we're going to delve into this book right here, also entitled by Edward Hendry, The Greatest Light on Earth, Proof That Our World Is Not a Moving Globe. But the greatest lie is they're hiding our identity. They have hid our identity. The, uh, the, uh, the, Hebrew, the, the Israelites, the Hebrews. The black men and women. The African Americans. It's been scattered across the face of the earth. But, let's get into this information. So check this out. It says here, so as you see here, these are Masons. These are Masons. All these people are Masons. So it says, the Masonic Sun Worshipping Globalist Cult of NASA. So the author says, his name is Eric Dubay, he says, in my book, Famous Freemasons, Exposed, I showed how Nicholas Copernicus, I talked about Nicholas Copernicus in my last video, Johannes Kepler, Galileo Galilei, and Isaac Newton, the four forefathers of the globalist heliocentric doctrine, all posed for Masonic portraits. Highlighting various symbols and hand signs denoting their affiliation with the Brotherhood. Galileo poses on a Masonic checkerboard floor. Kepler with the hand hidden sign, and all four of them pose with the Masonic compass and a globe while flashing the Masonic M hand sign. So Isaac Newton was even knighted by Queen Anne at Trinity College Masonic Master Lodge. So here's the M, the M sign he's talking about. Okay. And then, when you drop down here, it says, an inordinate number of NASA astronauts, the current propagators of the globalist heliocentric doctrine, are and were admitted Freemasons as well. John Glenn, two-time two U.S. Senator, and one of NASA's first astronauts is a known Mason. Buzz Aldrin Jr., the second man to lie about walking on the moon, is admitted wearing, is admitted, he's an admitted ring wearing, hand sign flashing 33rd degree Mason from Monteclair Lodge, number 144, New Jersey. See that? These people are Masons. The Masons. Now listen to this. Um, it, it's it's all sun worship, right? Now listen to this. Let's go back. Finish. Um. We're gonna bring it out, Israel. These people are lying to you. They, they, they never went on the moon. They're lying. 
Now listen to this. Um, so I've had this book for some for some time now. And listen to what listen to what these scientists are saying. How many miles the Earth is away? How many miles the Sun and the Moon is? Right. So it says there are several theories about the relative size and distance of the Sun and the Moon, all with their points of evidence and point of, of contention. Flat earthers throughout the ages have used sent, uh, set text and plain trigonom trigonometry, attempting to make such calculations, usually colluding the sun and the moon both to be only about 32 miles in diameter and less than a few thousand miles from the earth. Perhaps the least plausible model, certainly the most exaggerated and imaginative, is the reigning heliocentric theory claiming the sun to be a whopping 865,374 miles in diameter, 92,955,807 miles from the earth, and the moon, 202,159 miles in diameter, and 238,900 miles in the earth. Heliocentric astronomical figures always sound perfectly precise. But they have historically been notorious for regularly, regularly and, dr and drastically changing them to suit their various models. For instance, in his time, Copernicus calculated the sun's distance from the Earth to be 3,391,200 miles. The next century, so what is a century? A century is 100 years. The next century, J Johannes Kepler decided it was actually 12,376,800 miles away. Isaac Newton once said, quote, It matters not whether we reckon it 28 or 54 million miles distance from either uh, 54 million miles distance, for either would do just well. How scientific! Benjamin Martin calculated between 81 and 82 million miles. Thomas Dilworth calculated 93,726,900 miles. John Hind stated positively 95,298,260 miles. Benjamin Gold said more than 96 million miles. And Christian Mayer thought it was more than 104 million. See, these people are liars, man. Who's coming up with all these figures and calculations? These people are lying to you. They never went to the moon. They're lying to you. Now, it's all Freemasons. Freemasonry. It says the Earth is not a planet. Planets are just stars, and stars are not suns. Now, uh, let's see. I don't want to go over my time. Okay. And they talk about gravity and things of that nature, right? Yeah. Like here. Free basin bases. Okay? It's all free basin. Bill Nye. Uh what's his dude name? Um I forget what this guy's name is. Neil, uh, Neil Armstrong, not Neil Armstrong, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So it says here, look at this, right? It says here that NASA's logo is a giant red fork serpent's tongue overlaying the starry heavens. Serpents, and specifically the fork tongues, have, been, have long been associated with lying, deceit, Cleverness and two faces, two facedness, manipulation with Satan, the devil. Why would the National Aeronautics and Space Administration choose their cho choose this as their official logo? The United Nations, the New World Order government headquarters, built on land donated by 33rd Degree Freemason John D. Rockefeller. It's represented by a logo flag, which clearly, which clearly depicts a flat earth divided into 33 sections. Now, he 
here you have over here all these free Masonic signs. Freemason. Right here. These guys have they have mace, they have Masonic rings on them, masons. The liars. Now listen to this. All this look at all this Freemason hand, uh, Freemason symbolism. The first person to ever present the idea of a sun centered universe was Pythagoras of Samos in around 500 BC. Pythagoras is also widely accepted by Masonic historians as being the very first Freemason. Master Mason Dr. James, Dr. James Anderson said in his defense of Masonry that I am fully convinced that Freemasonry, Freemasonry is very nearly allied to the old Pythagorean discipline. From whence I am persuaded it may in some circumstance so, some circumstances very just claim a dis, claim a descent. Master Mason William Hutchinson wrote in his Spirit of Masonry that the ancient Masonic record brings us positive evidence of the Pythagorean doctrine and the Basilic Basilidian principles making the foundation of, of our religious and moral duties. See that? Look at this poster stamp. This poster stamp says, yes, I can, I want you to see this, but it's not. I'm gonna read it for you. It says, the first mason on the moon he was a master mason in Monteclair. Okay? This is talking about Budge Archers. This dude never went to the moon. He's lying to you. Look at all these Freemason hands, Freemason symbolism. This is Freemason. Freemasonry. These dudes are liars. They never went to the moon. Like this. The NASA moon and Mars landing hoaxes. In 1969, Apollo moon landings in 1976, Vikings and other subsequent Mars landings, all images showing a spherical rotating Earth, all supposed space stations and satellites. Orbiting the ball of Earth, every Hubble Photoshop image and the entire NASA's organization are one big hoax created to convince you that the Earth is not flat. Over the past five decades, through lies and photo and video trickery, the Freemasons at NASA have effectively convinced the entire world to believe several myths totally contrary to our senses and, and personal experiences. Okay? I can't have come up with this garbage. Um, like this. They said, oh, we on the, oh, they on, they on the moon. They ain't on, on the damn moon. I'm lying to you. These, these dudes are in the desert. They're in the desert. Are you going to believe our Heavenly Father? Or are you going to believe man, his creation? Look, look at this. It says... Another solid proof of NASA living up to its fork serpent tongue logo are the many supposed moon rocks given to museums the world over by Neil Armstrong and Bud Archer. Shortly after, shortly after Apollo 11, private investigator Paul Jacobs reported asking the U.S. Department of Geology head whether he had examined the moon rocks and if he could verify their op optimistic. Of the, uh, of the density, to which the geologist, the geologist simply laughed and insinuated that people high in the U.S. government knew all about the cover-up. Cover -up. More recently, in 2009, curate, uh, curators at Amsterdam's uh, Reichschicks or Reichschicks Museum investigated their moon rock. Personally given to them by Neil Bob Armstrong and Aldrin in 1969, only to find that it was actually a worthless piece of petrified wood. Are you hearing this, Israel? 
these dudes never went to the moon. You can't land on moon. How can you land on light? They're lying to you. They said, oh, we, we bought this back from the moon. They examined it and tested it. They said, no, this, this ain't from the moon. This is this is this is wood. This came from the this came from the earth. Now, what do you notice in this segment right here? Didn't I just show you, show you this in that movie, Capricorn, uh, uh, Capricorn One, with them staging this? You people would have wake up. They're lying to you. You can't trick me. Come on, we spin on a, on a ball, Earth, at 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 ninety some thousand miles per hour. Get out of here, man. Get out of here with that garbage. Use your brain. Use the brain the most I gave you. Use the senses. You feel as though you're spinning a thousand miles per hour? Do you feel uh, uh, when you look out in the in the morning sky and you see the sun? Do you feel as though the, the sun is ninety three million miles away, or or is it only a few thousand miles away? Question this stuff. Question this stuff. Now. I didn't want to take out too much time in this book, but like right here, you have here these Masonic aprons. These what the uh, of uh, some of those camps were, IUIC, following following out the master, the white man. Okay. Um. Now, so let's let's put this book to the side. If you want, you can pick this book up at your own convenience and leisure. You know what I'm saying? He even talks about the Nephilim, the giants. They have all these bones. They have these bones that's been dug up and they have them hidden in their museums because they don't want you to know that these giants, these Nephilim, these fallen angels were really on the earth. They're still here. They have just diminished in size. Okay, all these all these big bones. Okay, a brother. Uh, I'm I'm toning down on, on the use of my profanity, Israel. Cause you know me, I like to go. I, I go in when I get when I get mad. I go in. I I use a lot of profanity. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the bastardized language. This is not a language. But a brother was telling me that uh, when we speak these curse words. We actually, uh, these, these words have, uh, we're putting spells on, on people. Because these, these words have, uh, symbolism, uh, spells on them. You know what I'm saying? So look at this, look at this hat. This is a Muslim hat. These are strainers. The same hat. It's the same hat that these people are wearing for these, uh, for the, for the Strainers Hospital. And I'm not trying to say that these that these children are not sick in these hospitals. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not saying that. But who knows? I question all I question all of that stuff. Who knows? Can it be possible that these kids are acting? You see them, you see them for yourself on the Sandy Hook, on the Sandy Hook uh, thing that them kids are acting. You know what I'm saying? So you have here. Shriners, all these, look at this, all these symbols, there's no dealing with the sun and the moon. These people are putting the most high creation above him. Okay, look at that. Now, let's put this book to the side. This book is the title of the Flat Earth Conspiracy. Now, let's jump into this book. Okay, and listen to this. Um, it says the most universally accepted scientific theory, scientific belief today is that the Earth is a globe spinning on its axis at a speed of approximately a thousand miles per hour at the equator, while at the same time it is orbiting the Sun at approximately six to seven thousand miles, six to seven thousand miles per hour. All of this is happening as the Sun is. Is uh, as the as the sun in turn is supposed to be hurl, hurling through the Milky Way galaxy at approximately five hundred thousand miles per hour. The Milky Way galaxy itself is alleged to be the is alleged to be racing through space 
at a speed ranging from 300,000 to 1,340,000 miles per hour. Who's coming up with these calculations with these numbers? These white folks. I'm keeping it real. It's white men. What most people are not told is that the purported spinning, orbiting, and speeding and speeding through space has never been proven. In fact, every scientific experiment that has ever been performed to determine the motion of the Earth has been proven the Earth is stationary. Yet, textbooks ignore the scientific proof that contradicts the myth of a spinning ball and orbiting globe. Now, let's get into this. Let's go into this book. Okay? Let's go into this book. It's a lot of information in this book. It's about 500 some pages worth. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's see. Like, like here, with their composite imagery, it says here in figure 98, what we're looking at. It says that close up of sex written in the written in clouds on an image of the earth that NASA claims is a photograph of space. Whenever you ever looked up in the sky and looked at the clouds, and, and have you ever seen the clouds spell out an image, spell out a word? It is noticeable that the word sex in the clouds is written at a 23.4 degree vertical angle. Which is which is supposed which is the supposed tilt of the globe of the Earth under the heliocentric model. Drop down. It says the high priest of the heliocentric religion did not arbitrarily pick twenty three point four degrees. The adjacent horizontal angle is the, is the, uh, the adjacent horizontal angle to the supported twenty three point twenty three point four tilt of the Earth. Under the heliocentric model, is 66.6 degrees. 90 degrees take away 23.4 degrees is 66, 66.6 degrees. That's 666. Okay? Now, they're trying to take the most high out of, out of the equation. They don't want you to believe that, 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 that there's a creator that's, that's governing everything. That's, that's uh, it's observing everything that we do. Okay, so let's do this. I told I was going to go into um, uh, who came up with the Big Bang Theory, right? Okay. Like about here, this is the NASA's, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Advanced Spacecraft Center. September 19, 1969. And it says, Illustration, il, uh, uh, illustration is uh, Luther A. Smith, 33rd degree Mason, Sovereign Grand Commander, Supreme Council, 33rd degree. It says, Dear Grand Commander, it was a great moment in my life to be cordially welcomed to the House of the Temple on September 16, 1969. By you and Grand Secretary Chief, uh, Grand Secretary, Grand Secretary General uh, Klein, uh, Klein Genev, 33rd degree, and also the member of your staff. My great pleasure, however, was to be able to present to you on this occasion the Scottish Rite flag, which I carry on the Apollo 11 flight to the moon. And blazing in color with the Scottish Rite double headed eagle, the Blue Lodge emblem, and the Sovereign Grand Commander uh, insignia. And this is given to this letter was written to Bud Aldrich. Okay, now let's do this. Because Einstein, he didn't know what the hell he was talking about either. He was a liar too. Come with that MC, it was MC squared. That was garbage. They, they, uh, Einstein was, was a puppet, they was using his ass. It was using him. Apparently, some of the most powerful, apparently, some very powerful interests are very happy about the hoax of Einstein's theory of relativity. These powerful interests are the dark and evil Jewish controlled Time magazine uh, 
These powerful interests are dark and evil. Jewish controlled Time magazine is owned by one of the largest media conglomerates in the world. Time Warner, the founder of the magazine, were Brenton Hayden and uh, Henry Lewis, who were both members of the Satanic Secret Society, the Brotherhood of Death, commonly known as the Skull and Bone Society. George W. Bush is, is, a, is a Skull and Bones man. He's a Skull and Bones man. Okay? Now, let me go here. Let's do this. Okay. I'm trying to find this this section with the uh, okay. Here we go. Now listen to this. There's Bud. Uh, I mean, there's near. Uh, there's uh, George Latimer, Lamatria, and Albert Einstein in 1933. Now let's read this, Israel. Now check this out. Billions of years ago. 
This is what your atheists talk about. The Big Bang. The size of the universe is now determined by the dictates of the Kabbalah. That book in addition to outlining the relativity concept to allow the 15 plus billion year age of the universe of the universe also outlines that the Big Bang and expanding universe concepts which gives license to claim that billions of light year distance to the stars. Both of these myths about the age and size of the universe have been brought to fruition by the theoretical science establishment which has used NASA's origins program to establish the Kabbalah reign over all science. End quote. It says Hall quotes a Jewish commentator who states that the quote the, the Ramban, the Ramban, 13th century Rabbi Nach Mandis, who, refer, who refers to what he writes as coming from hidden knowledge, says that this initial creation was something so small and without physical form. This idea that everything originated from a single point in the universe is what science calls the Big Bang, end quote. Research has confirmed that the Jewish commentator quoted by Hall is correct. The modern figure of 14 billion years attributed to the age of the universe is not based upon science, but rather a mystical, but rather a mystical religious belief. This belief that the universe is billions of years old was first announced by Nachmanides. Nachmanides was a known rabbi, which is an acronym of his name, Rabbi Moshe ben Nakan. 1194 to 1270 AD. Nachmanides was the foremost expert on Jewish religions, Jewish religious laws and customs of his age. Now, it says here that Nachmanides interpreted the creation account in Genesis not as six literal 24-hour days, but rather a much larger, but rather a much longer period that equal approximately 15 three, four billion years. This is very close to the 14 plus billion years that is often hypothesized by modern so-called scientists. These white people. You see that? Now, let's go over to another. Let's go over here. And it says here that who do we find reveal to the world as the progenitor or the forefather of the Big Bang Theory. Another Roman Catholic priest, the Jewish controlled press tried their best to conceal the Jewish religious origin of the Big Bang Theory. As is typical of an intelligence operation, the Jewish controlled media have done what is known in the intelligence community as a limited hangout. They admit that the Big Bang has its origin in religion. But they conceal that it is that it is Babylonian Judaism. They instead steer the public toward their gentile, gentile, gentle frontman in the Catholic Church, while they remain in the shadows pulling the strings. In a PBS article titled "Big Bang Theory: A Roman Catholic Creation," Edgar Herrick claims that it was a Roman Catholic priest who first postulated the Big Bang Theory. While the Big Bang Theory is as old as the universe itself, our concept of it is, strike, is still strikingly new, less than 100 years old. And if you dig into its origins, you come across a curious fact. Atheists, devout Christians, you might want to sit down for this. The Big Bang Theory was first proposed by a Roman Catholic priest. It wasn't just any priest. It was Mon, it was Mon Signier, George Lemaitre, a, bril, a brilliant Belgian who entered the Jesuit priesthood following his service as an artillery officer in the Belgian army during World War I. He also was an accomplished astronomer and a talented mathematician and physician. After earning his graduate degree in astronomy, 
from the University of Cambridge in England, he came to Boston and spent a year at Harvard College Observatory before earning his doctorate at MIT. It says here that as, an aston as astonishing as Lamontre's idea was, perhaps equally surprising to us now was the reaction of the church. Lamontre was not jailed by the Pope like Galileo. He was not excommunicated the way Johannes Kepler was by the Lutheran Church. Quite the opposite. In the early 1950s, Pope Pius XII not only declared that the Big Bang and Catholic concept of creation were compatible, he embraced Lamontre's idea as a scientific validation for the existence of God and of Catholicism. Notice that the article from the PBS states that the Big Bang originated only 100 years ago with a Catholic priest. There is no mention of the Jewish rabbi Dekmandis, whose postulation of the Big Bang predated Lamontre's theory by approximately 700 years. At a conference in the 1930s, where, where Lamontre presented his theory, Einstein reportedly, reportedly remarked, quote, this is the most beautiful and satisfactory explanation of creation to which I have ever listened. These two white people, here's Albert Einstein, your most beloved MC MC equals MC squared puppet. Einstein, who was a, who was a Talmudic Jew, looked upon the Big Bang theory with favor. It seems that Einstein's approval puts the Jewish uh, imprimatur uh, imprim on Lamontre's Big Bang Theory. Einstein's influence in the Zionist community was such that on November 17, 1952, Einstein was offered, was offered the, presidentiary, the, pres uh, the, the, the presidency of, the, of Israel, which he, with regret, turned down. Are you saying, are you hearing this, Israel? The Illuminati order was not invented by Adam Weiser, but rather renewed and reformed. The first known Illuminati order, Alum uh, Brada, was founded in 1492 by Spanish Jews called Morenos, who were also known as crypt crypto Jews. You see that? Damn. So we just proved to you, we just proved to you where the Big Bang Theory came from. We just proved it. We just proved it. So all that trash, all that garbage, they're talking about they went to the moon. They didn't go to no moon. They never went to the moon. How can you land on light? How can you land on light? Look at this. Freemason Budge Alton to the right. With Luther A. Smith, a Masonic sovereign grand master holding the Masonic flag, Aldrin took with him when he allegedly when he allegedly landed on the moon. States of America, J. William Mendendorf II, to commemorate the visit of the, of the of, of, to commemorate the visit to the Netherlands of the Apollo 11 astronauts. It's that same rock that they said they got from the moon. They found out to be a, 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 a fraudulent. It came out that it was petrified wood. Not surprisingly, U.S. And Embassy officials were, were unable to explain the findings, but are investigating. As of this writing, it has been over six years since the U.S. government has promised to investigate the moon rock fraud. There has been no findings announced since that time. When the U.S. government promises to find the cause of the fraudulent moon rock that came from NASA after six years, 
does not announce any findings, that suggests that the U.S. government is the culprit. NASA is the source for the fraudulent moon rock. The U.S. ambassador is the official representative of the U.S. government in a poor country. The U.S. government will never explain how they presented a fake moon rock as a gift to the foreign government official. Because to do so will require it to admit that all moon rocks are fake. NASA never went to the moon, and the fake moon rock, which was vetted through and uh, 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 authenticated by NASA and came directly from the, from the official U.S. government represented in the Netherlands, is yet one more piece of evidence proving that the NASA moon landings were hoaxes. NASA was handing out fake moon rocks because they have no real moon rocks to give out. They have no real moon rocks because they never landed on the moon. Watch the movie Capricorn 1. These people are not on the moon. The staging is in the desert. And they and they and they um and they uh use composite imagery to do CGI. See look. Identical clouds on Earth six days apart, right? So they're showing you different, they're showing you the same cloud formations. All right? Like here, NASA's alleged photograph of the Earth flip at 180 degrees revealing sex written in the cloud formation. See that? We don't need an we don't need an expert to detect that the July 6, 2015 Deep Space Climate Observatory satellite picture is not a candidate, a, a candidate photograph of Earth from space. The image itself contains the proof that it's a, for, that it's a forgery. You see that? If you look at the, lower, at the lower southwest portion of the globe image above, you can see that the graphic artist who drew the clouds Jew and the word sex upside down. See that? So I'm proving everything I'm talking about. They can't trick me. What does the Bible say? Most High said that that um in the book of Genesis, read the book of Genesis, the creation account in Genesis. He said he placed a firmament. There's water above the firmament, and we are inside of something. We are inside of something, and the most high is above us, and he's looking down upon everything we do. And he placed the moon and the stars and the lights in, in, inside of here where we at, for lights in the sky, for times and seasons. <clears throat> so are you going to believe your heavenly father, or are you going to believe the creation is creation? Man, he's, no man is a liar. Okay? Now, let's see. Like, okay, so let's do this. Okay, let's do this. So, we, we click on, let's go to Google. And let's, and let's go, let's click on out of space. Let's say we floating out of space. Let's say we floating out of space. We float on the globe. Right? And they say that it's, it's asteroids and stuff all out there, right? So what's keeping the asteroids from coming in into the Earth's, Earth's atmosphere? And this is what, they say this, this, is, this is what the Earth looks like, right? Okay. Uh... It says thousands of satellites out there. There ain't no satellites out there. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. There's no satellites in outer space. Okay? Matter of fact, let me do this before I'm out of time. John McClain, he was a black guy. And he talked about flat earth. Uh, 
McQueen, 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 I forget what the guy's name, Mac, Mc, uh, I'm trying to find this guy's name. Cause he had wrote an article. And I can't find it. Man. His name is McQuinn. Flat plane. I can't find it, Israel. I can't find it. But uh, even NASA had did. NASA had wrote. Admit a flat I can't, I can't find it. I can't find it. Man. Uh, what is that guy's name? John McQueen. I'm out of time, Israel. But we have done enough to show and prove that we're not living on a flat earth ball spinning throughout a space. I'm lying to you. spinning in outer space. Hell, here it is. The Earth a plane. Let me see. The it's Earth a plane. By John Edward Quinlan. Okay, John Edward Quinlan. This black man, he wrote an article called The Earth a Plane. Okay, here's the article. So I can, we can read this, Israel.
Okay, uh, it's called the Urca Plain, uh, John Quinlan. Earth. A. Plain. John. Okay. And we're going to click on this. Okay, so this is a black man, right? See, there's a black man, John Quillen. Okay. And, let me see. Let's get out of this. I got 10 minutes left. trying to I'm trying to do this as quick as quick as possible Israel it's only a six page article Each of the four corners forms an angle of 93, 
uh, 90 degrees, and together a total of 600 and, uh, 360 degrees, the same side, the same degrees of a circle. So they say it's 365 days a year, but they're lying to you. They added five days to the, to the, to the, uh, 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 degrees. It's only 360 degrees in a circle. So, it says here that he's telling you what to do, how to perform these, uh, observations. You can do on your own, right? You can perform this on your own. It's on a six-page article. And he done, done chopped those scientists down, those, those, uh, Masonic, those Masons. He tells you, like, let's go back here to, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson says the earth is a, says earth is a pear shape. Listen to this fool. So, uh, so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. It gets wider in the middle. And so earth throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's an it's oblate. And officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good word. It's like pear shaped. Pear shaped. Pear shaped. Pear shaped. Pear shaped. Wait, let's go back to this article. What did he just say? This man right here, the Earth and Plane, John Edward Quinlan. He says that um, neither is it pear shaped, as Professor W. J. Solis suggested as recently as the May 24, 1906, at the Royal Institution at Albemarle Street. In London. What this fool would just say? This fool would just say the earth is pear shaped. He says, Come on, Nasty, make up your mind. What, the, what does the earth really look like? All these, so this is the earliest they have of the earth in 1972. Then they change, they keep on changing. They keep changing every year. I come with facts and proof on my channel. I'm not, I'm not just speaking stuff out of, out of nothing, out of thin air. So let's listen to this so, dummy. Let's to this fool again. Uh, so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. It gets wider in the middle. And So Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the pole. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And officially, it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear shaped. Pear shaped. Pear shaped. Pear shaped. When did he say it? When did this come out? Okay, I don't know when, that, when he did his interview. But he said it's pear shaped. Right. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chub chubby is a good word. It's like pear shaped. Pear shaped. It's like pear shaped. It's a good word. It's like pear shaped. It's a good word. It's like pear shaped. What did he just say? It says that it is an uh, unquestionable fact that the Earth is an extended plane. With an irregular land surface and out of a spherical global of shape with two flat ends, as scientists and astronomers assert in their speculations, as most people believe. Neither is it pear shaped, as Professor W.J. Solis suggested as recently as the 24, May 24, 1906, at the Royal Institution at Abermere Street in London. And with that being said, I say peace and shalom. We're not flying out of space. The most high is sitting right above us, watching everything we do. Shalom.